Okay, good morning students. <clears throat> so today we are going to build a simple 4-bit CPU which can execute instructions like move the data to the register, perform arithmetic operation like addition, perform logical operation like and or XR. The same circuit diagram, once we design, you can easily extend to perform other operations like subtraction, load, store, and the branch operations also. Now make sure that <clears throat> we will have some theory in the beginning, how instructions can be coded in the machine language. We will prepare the program first, keep it ready, and then we'll start design the complete CPU step by step. So you can keep writing down on the paper. So, and just make the, what is required, ready with you before we start doing the design. <clears throat> so we will start with the, some basics, what is required to study with the. So now, now we are going to design a CPU. So it is a four bit CPU, which has got certain specifications. We are making certain assumptions before we start doing it. What are the assumptions we are making? Number one assumption, it's a four bit. So what does it mean that I can execute all the instructions which can handle four bit numbers. If I want to add, perform addition of two numbers, each of the numbers can be of size four bit. Now, so we are making an assumption that this is belongs to an architecture called risk type of architecture. So in that we are assuming it's of type microcontroller. In the sense, microcontroller different, differentiated with the microprocessor in few aspects. Number one, microcontroller has got program memory and the RAM present inside the chip. So whatever the chip you are going to design today, we will assume that program memory is present inside the CPU itself to store the instructions. With that angle, we are calling it as a microcontroller. Otherwise, it is nothing but a a processor, general processor. <clears throat> we are assuming there are eight general purpose registers will be there. General purpose registers are present. Are present. So we are naming them. So like R0, R1 and continue until we R7. Each of these register size is 4 bit because it's a 4 bit CPU. Now, so we are assuming the CPU, what we are going to design is of two types, either single bus architecture or a multi bus, like a three bus architecture. So we are assuming the CPU is of three bus architecture. So that is when we design, there'll be three buses will be there. So bus A, bus B, bus C. So all the other blocks like an ALU and register file, the counter, program counter, instruction register, decoding, everything is being placed around these three buses. And we are designing the CPU to execute few instructions like, so move immediate, immediate, or you can write more also, hash, so number or value to any register, destination register. So we are supporting these instructions. We are supporting add instruction at R A, R B, R D. So in the sense, I can add R A plus R B and store it in a R D destination. Similarly, so we are doing and, or, and X R. So these three operations also we support it. They are also follow the same format R B, R D, and then whatever the operation you are going to perform operation, it can be and or X R. So with another is RB, answer will be stored in the destination. So since all these operations expect the operands are in the registers, we also call this as a risk architecture. Because in the risk architecture, any operation you perform, arithmetic logical, we expect operands to be present inside the CPU. <clears throat> so we will add any other instructions required. We will add, so as we progress, so I'll add one more. So it has got a program memory where we are storing instruction of size 256 into 16. That means that the CPU, what we are designing, we are providing inside 
256 locations starting address with a 0 1 up to 255 and every location can have store 16 bit number so the instruction what we are coding today will require one word of 16 bit so which has to be stored in every address so we will we are assuming that so one instruction one instruction requires requires one word one word one word so that means that the whole of the add instruction i can put in one address we are also assuming that so it's a word addressable memory word addressable memory in theory we generally know that the memory is a byte addressable in a sense every byte will have an address now to make the design simple we are assuming that one address refers to one complete word of 16 bits so when i say address changes from 0 to 1 means i am referring to what next word of 16 bit so so with this we'll move to the machine coding We will prepare machine coding of instructions. So first, so we will follow machine coding of more instructions. So more immediate or number hash. So some number, whatever the number, into destination register. As we already discussed, every instruction can be represented in a 16 bits hmm? so please keep writing with me and just uh, have the template with you hmm? so now i have a 16 bits the bit zero one, two, so three four five six seven eight and the 15. So I have a 15 bits are there. Now I should be able to represent every part of the instruction that is of code, that is operation to be performed, the number and the register in this 16 bits. So when I say machine code, what does it mean that representing instruction in a binary language, ones and zeros. So now let's start one by one. I have to represent the more instruction in the instruction. So what we do is we will have an op code. So we will assume that one and one, whenever the two bits 15 and 14 are one, one. So it is representing what's called op code for a more instruction, op code for a more instruction. So what we do is when we write zero, zero here, we will consider this instruction is of a data manipulation that represents add XR or add instruction. Whenever we write one, one, we will assume that it represents more immediate instruction. So there can be always we can change it. Now we are making a very simple CPU. These are the assumptions we are making it now. So now as soon as instruction is brought into the processor, the control uh, logic looks at these two bits. And if it's a one one, it takes a decision. The remaining bits represent the operands for a more immediate instruction. <clears throat> now once these two bits are one one, now we, the instruction uh, coding should refer how the RD is represented and how the number is represented in the binary format inside the 16 bits. Now let's say RD. Now how many bits are required to represent RD in binary form? We know that eight registers are there. So that means that two to the power of three. So eight registers are there. So three bits are required to represent any register. Now what is the coding for the registers? It start from R0, R1, R2, R3, so up to R7. So I'm writing a binary code for them. So 0, 0 means R0 like this. This is a binary representation of the registers. So now I have the binary representation of all the registers. 
So now how many bits are required? Three bits. So zero, one, two. So these three bits, the first three bits, represents R D. You may ask the question, why I have to take the last three bits? I can take some other three bits. Yes, you can take any three bits. So now I am making an assumption. I am representing R D in the right side because it is suitable for uh, preparing a template for data manipulation instruction. Also, I take an R D. Next, so I have to represent a number now in a binary format inside this one. So how do you represent a number? Now I should know the range of the number. So this is a four bit CPU. This is a four bit CPU. So number can be maximum four bit. That means that any register <coughs> has got four bits. So any register, we can take it RI, has got a four bits are there. Now what is the maximum number I can load and the minimum number? So minimum number is zero zero I can load. It can go up to one one one. Since the after representing the instruction in a binary format, we are converted to hexadecimal format. So we should know hexadecimal numbers representation for every binary number, for particularly for nibble, one nibble. So now zero zero one means it's a one. It continues like that. So let's say one zero zero one is nine. So after that, so we should know that it will have a A. Then B, then C, D, E, and then this is it. Yeah, all the representation you should practice it. So the number range, what is possible now is for the number is zero to F. So any number you use in this instruction, it should be zero to F only. If I write one zero, can it represent? No, one zero requires more than four bits, but register cannot hold it. Always the value what we are using in the immediate instruction should be in the range of the register destination register. So that is why assemblers will give an error whenever you write a number which is exceeds the range of the register. So since now we are machine coding it, always remember that minimum is zero, maximum is F. Now, so how many bits are required to represent a number? So we know that it's a four bits are required. So four bits means three, four, five. Six. So now these four bits are used to represent what is called as a number, four bit number. Now, so now two bits for the half code, two bits we have used for the half code. So we have used four bits for the number, three bits. Now, totally, how many have become completed? Three plus four, so plus two. So it becomes nine bits. Now, how many remaining? 16 minus nine, seven bits are remaining. Now, these seven bits. So we are not using for this instruction. So I say don't care. So three, four, five, six, seven. Don't care. So let us take it as a zero for an X value. So X means I'll be representing by a zero. Now this is the template for move immediate instruction to machine code our assembly instructions. So this template, now we will use it and write Mission code for two, three instructions. Now examples. Let's say move immediate or move hash four into register R4. Let's say this is the instruction I want to execute in the CPU what we are going to design. So first I have to convert into machine language. So now I will follow the template what I have designed above and I'll start representing it now. Move, move means always the last two which should be one, one. Now R4. So what is the code for R4? Look at the code for R4. It's a 100. So I will write 100 in the space designated for RD. Now 4. 4 in binary language is nothing but so 1000. So 4. So 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 4. So this is the number I represented. Now another 7 bits are there which I don't care. I will make it 00. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7. Now totally 7 plus 2, 9, 9 plus 4, 13, 13 plus 3, 16. All the 16 bits I prepared now. Now I have to represent them in the hex format, hexadecimal format, because we have to store them in the memory. Whenever we store in any of the memories or the registers and we use a larger sim or any other simulator, any other debugger, we should first prepare a hexadecimal number, then only you can store it. Without accessible number, you cannot store it. In a binary, it is impossible to feed 100 like that. So always the industry uses 
hexadecimal format to represent binary information inside the registers, memory, and any other places where binary data is required. Now, to prepare the hexadecimal, I'll start from the left direction. I'll make the nibble, first nibble, one group. Next nibble, four bits, I'll make one group. Next four bits, I'll make one group. Next four bits, I'll make one group. Now, four four bit groups are made. Now, I'll be writing each of these groups. Each is a one nibble. So, nibble, I can convert into hexadecimal uh, digit using this number representation. So, if you want on one side, you can write down all the numbers, what is there here and equivalent hexadecimal. It's easy to write it for your understanding. I can write on one side. So, for example, 0, 0, 0. So, you can also write down on one side. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Start writing the hexadecimal representation of every nibble. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 means we write as an A, yes. B, C, D, uh, 1, 1, 1, 0, that is E, and then 1, 1, F. So just see that you have with you on the paper for a nibble representation in binary and the corresponding hexadecimal digits. So this is a very important. You should have this one. If you make any mistake in the representation, CPU will not execute because it thinks that it is some other number. So representing the hexadecimal numbers for a corresponding binary is very, very important. So now I have the notation of uh, hexadecimal or decimal number for the registers. I have a hexadecimal representation of all the binary combinations of four bits. So now I will group them 1100, 1100. So 1100 zero, zero is C. So I am representing C. Now 00, zero is 0. Now 0010, zero, zero, zero. it is nothing but 2. I am writing 2. And then 0104. Zero, 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 I got it 4. Now the machine language equivalent for more immediate 4 R4 four is C024. Now we'll take one more example because we require two numbers before addition. So more immediate, immediate hash. 5 to let's say R2 register. Now we'll machine code for this one. Now more means the last two bits should be 1 1. R2. R2 is nothing but representation 0, 1, 0. I'll write 0, 1, 0. Then 5. So machine code for the 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 4 bits are required for this. So this is a this is for the 5. This is for the R2. So remaining seven, I'll make it zero zero six. Five, six, seven. Now group them. One one zero zero is one nibble. Zero 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 another nibble. Zero one zero another nibble. One zero zero one zero. So it is a C, it is zero, it is two, and then one zero one zero is E. Zero, zero, e. So just check it one more time whether the code is proper. Zero one zero. Zero zero. Huh? Uh, one zero is a two, so this is eight nine e c. So double check the representation of every part of the instruction in the binary format using the tables and then machine code it. So in the exam, they will give the instructions directly. You have to machine code in the lab in the final exam, and you have to feed that in and then execute it. If the representation is wrong, it will not execute. So that's why double check. What is the instruction template? Look at the template always. Look at the tables, what you prepared for the number and the register, and then take the instruction, represent in a proper places, take the don't case as Z and the X and then do it. So now we have the machine coding for the first instruction. We have done it. Now we'll do the machine coding for the second instruction. Now, so machine code for the second instruction. So we'll go to the next screen. Now, so what is the machine code for the next instruction? So now 
we will see the instruction template for template for for data manipulation instruction when i say data manipulation it includes all arithmetic and logical instructions so we will use a word called data manipulation instructions in arm they use the word called data manipulation when they say data manipulation means it all arithmetic and logical comes under data manipulation so now we will see the instruction template for that so now so how does the instruction looks operation when i say operation it can be add and or xr so you have uh, one register called re you have another register called rb and this is add this is a format here operation means it can be add and or and then xr any instruction i can write it for this format so the meaning is re so we perform operation whatever the operation required rb and then it's stored in a rd now again we are shown in the beginning itself the instruction can be represented in the 16 bit so we will number the bits so i have just numbered all the the bits so we will assume the last two bits whenever it is 0 and 0 so it is an off code for all the data manipulation instruction off code for data manipulation instruction instruction instructions so that means that whenever the last two bits are 0 0 as soon as the instruction is fetched into the instruction register the decoding circuit will look at these two bits if it is 0 0 it thinks that oh it is an data manipulation instruction and the remaining bits are used to extract the operands so these are the two bits which differentiate whether it's a move instruction or a data manipulation instructions now now we have to represent rd first so the right three bits i'll be using for rd because same three bits we have used for rd in case of a move instruction also so it's easy to design the circuit so now three bits so 0 1 2 we will be using to represent what is called as rd so it's representing rd three bits we are using it next three bits three four five so we are using for representing rb so next three bits we are using to represent rv so now how many left out you have to find out now so three 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 and then the two so now totally uh, 9, 10, 11 bits are there. You will require some more thing is required. So having operand represented, having it's a data manipulation instruction is represented, but we never indicated any space. We are never given any space for indicate whether it's an add and or XR. Now in this case, there are four instructions are there. So we require two to the power of two. That means that two bits are required to represent whether it's an a what type of data manipulation instruction so i will say call them as a operation op so it requires two bits i'll be using bit number 12 and 13 so two bits i'll be using these two bits are used to indicate if it's zero zero bits it is an add instruction if the bit is zero one i will treat this as a and if it's a one zero i'll treat as an or operation if it's a one one i'll treat as an xr operation so now so we know that the information what is represented is sufficient to code the full instruction. 00, zero means data manipulation instruction. OP indicates what type of data manipulation instruction it is. REA, one of the operand. RB, another operand. RD, destination operand. So now how many bits left out? So 11 plus 2. Now 13 bits are used. Now 3 bits are not used. Those are the don't care bits. X, X, X. I'll mark them. So in the program, I use x is equal to 0. Now, now we will vision code two of the data manipulation instructions. So example, and, and let's say, so in the previous program, we have used more immediate 4, R4. So R4, I have some data. I'll take the R4. And also we have used more immediate 5, R2. So R2, I have a data. I'll take an R2. Now I want to store this in the R7 register. So now I will machine code that. I will prepare 16-bit template. 
Now I'll start doing first two is always zero zero because it's a data manipulation instruction. It's a data manipulation. So I'll make it as a zero zero. Now the next two bits indicate what type of data manipulation it's an add for add. It is a zero zero. So I'm writing zero zero there. Next. So right side RD RD is R7 R7 means 1 1 1. So this is nothing but what R7 indicates next next three bits is an R2 R2 is we know that 00 is R0 0 0 1 is R1 0 1 0 is R2 so 0 1 0 it's an R2 so R2 comes here similarly R4 so R4 is 1 0 0 so we know that 0 1 0 is 2 0 1 1 is 3 4 that is R4 is 1 0 0 1 0 0 so I'll take R4 I'll put it here now now all operations whatever is required to represent is over now only thing xxx is there there are three xx is there I'll make it 0 0 0 now we'll group them so first nibble <clears throat> second nibble third nibble and the fourth nibble now x is equal equivalent 0 so 1 so then 0 0 1 and then 0 1 1 1 7 represented so 0 1 1 7 is the representation of the add or 4 or 2 or 7 you can double check it 0 0 data manipulation 0 0 add r 7 is 1 1 1 0 1 0 is r 2 so and then so R4 is 1, 0, 0. So we have got it, all these things. So it is nothing but 0, 1. So again, 1, 0, 1, 1, 7. So we have got a 7, which is a machine language equivalent for add instruction. Now, so if I want to code some other instruction, let's say I want to code XR, XR, R4, R2, and I want to store the answer in R6. So what is the machine code for this one? So mission code for this is now first two is zero zero no changes there. Now next two operation is what XR XR means it is a one one so it's I'm representing one one. Next R six R six is one one zero. This is R six. Next R two so R two is so R two is zero one zero zero one zero is R two so zero 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 one one zero. Next R4. R4 is 1, 0, 0. That is, you got R4. The next three X's don't care. I'll make it 0 and 0. So now, so after representing R6, R2, it's correct. R4 correct. XR correct. Operation. We'll group them as a nibbles. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, then 0, 0, 1 then 0 0 0 1 1 0 now 0 0 1 1 is 3 now 0 0 0 1 is 1 next 0 0 0 1 again 1 0 1 1 0 6 double check it again one more time so 0 1 1 0 is 6 0 0 1 it's a 1 0 0 1 it's a 1 0 0 1 1 3 1 1 6 so 3 1 1 6 it's a machine language equivalent for the instruction XR, R4, R2, R6. Now, having got all the four instructions ready, we will store the instructions in the memory. Store in memory. Store in program memory. Store in program memory. Now, so I will take the program memory. I know that now four instructions are there. Every instruction requires one address. It is the word addressable. We assumed it. So, first address. 0, then second 1, 2, and 3. We will write these instructions which are in machine language or binary format in uh, these addresses. So the first instruction, the first instruction we have prepared more immediate, more immediate for R4. So that is equivalent of that. So we have to write in here C024. So this instruction is equivalent to more hash Four. Instead of more immediate, I'll use the word more. Both the same here in this case. So R4. This is the instruction we have written in the first address. Then the second address what? More hash 5 R2. 
So now I'll write the binary language of that here. C0 to E. Similarly, now add instruction we have prepared now. So add R4, R2, and then R7. So this we have set in second address. So the machine language is what this is 0, 1, 1, 7. So similarly, I'll write another instruction XR. R4, R2, and then R6. So machine language equivalent of that is 3, 1, 1, 6. We have stored it. Now, these are the four words which represent four instructions in assembly language. So this is called as machine coding or object code of the program. Whenever we write in hexadecimal, it is nothing but binary. If you just split them, each of the nibble, it's a binary. So only thing is hexadecimal is a concise way of representing the binary. So now machine language or object program of the assembly language. This is an ALP. This is the code is ALP. So this is object program or MLP machine language program. So we have got it. Now once this is available, now we can design the CPU, feed this program into the CPU what we are going to design now and execute the instructions step by step. So here. We are assuming everything is a one clock cycle instructions. One clock cycle is required to exclude every instruction. So totally four clock cycles, you can finish the whole the, the program. So this sheets keep with you, uh, with you. When we design, we require this information. So we will use this information to design our circuit. Now everyone can uh, use your logicing. You can open the logicing. And we'll start now with the large sim for the remaining portion. Now I have gone to the large sim. So first you can observe me for some time. So don't be in a hurry to uh, create the design with me. So even you can do it. If it is a uh, not able to follow, you can just observe and then you can able to do it slowly. So now what are the circuits we are going to design now? So now we are going to design a circuit, so which is similar to the three bus architecture with a little variations are there. I will just draw the topic before we do it. So this clarity will be there for you. Hmm. Okay, so architecture or block diagram of the CPU, what we are going to design. So now, as I said, we have a three buses will be there. So this is bus A, this is the bus B, and this is, let's say, bus C. Now, A, B, and C, and we are putting all our logics in this blocks in this buses now first the first block is what is called register file so register file means set up all the registers which is present inside the cpu now we know that in our case how many register we have r0 to r7 we have assumed it now this in the three bus architecture using the c bus you can write into any of this register directly you can write it similarly once you have the data in the registers, you can read two registers at a time into two buses. I can read any of the register, put the value into the register, one bus. I can read any of the register, put the value into another bus. So that means that whatever we are going to design the register file today has the capability to read two registers and put to the buses simultaneously. At the same time, it has a capability to write the data into the destination required register from the C bus. So now we have an ALU is also present inside our system ALU. So this ALU will have two operands is required for that operand A and operand B. So one of the operand, let's say, will be coming from the B bus. One of the operand will come from a A bus. Will come, and the ALU will perform the operations. What operation can perform? So we have designed for AT and or XR. 
you can extend this for any of the operations and answer will be stored or connected to the seeds. So this is what we are going to supposed to do the design now. So we have to design ALU register file and make all these connections possible. So we are making a simple design for the other parts, counter, instruction register, decoding circuit to make the design simple. So what are the assumptions? We are taking one eight bit register for the program counter. Why we are taking eight bit register means the size of the program memory, what we are assuming is 256. So 256 into 16. So that means that address generated by the program counter should be 8 bit is good enough because 2 to the power of 8 is 256. That's why 8 bit program counter we have taken it. So this program counter always starts. It starts from 0. So as soon as so we reset the system, it starts from 0. It can go up to 255, 0 to 255 and then roll back to the 0. It keeps executing the instructions, 256 instructions one after the other. Now. Once the program that whatever the four instructions we have stored here, the instructions are stored in the program memory. instruction one, two, three, four, like that. So this instruction will be brought from the program memory and it will be held in the instruction register, instruction register, also called as IR register, instruction register. Instruction register is 16 bit because uh, every instruction size is 16 bit. So I require 16 bit register to hold the instruction. Instruction register is connected to so decoding circuit. We say we can call it a control and decoding circuit, which is a very important part in any of the processor. It is implemented using a hardware control or a micro program control. But today we are using hardware control. Now this instruction register data will be read by the control decoder. It looks at whether the last two bits are 0, 0 or 1, 1, what I supposed to do it. All the decisions will be taken here. It generates a lot of control signals. All the control signals generate. What control signal? Let's say it generates a control signal, which is the register REA to be selected. So one like that. It generates another control signal RB. So which is the register I have to bring to the, the bus B. And it will generate a control signal RD. So it indicates. So which is the destination register I have to use. Similarly for the ALU, it generates what is an operation you have to perform. So it generates an operation, what operation you have to perform. So like this, so, and it also looks at what is the number to be loaded into the register, if at all, if the uh, immediate number. So if it's an immediate number, it's a uh, whatever value you are getting it. Like this, different signals will be generated and these signals are connected to the different logics present on the CPU and instruction getting executed. Now overall, how does it work? First of all, you have to store all the instructions in the memory, make the program count as zero, give one clock cycle. So everything is based on what? Clock. The whole thing works in a clock. So clock is connected to the program counter. So clock is connected to the register file because every register is a synchronous positive H triggered flip flops are used. So clock are used into the instruction register, clock is connected everywhere. Every time you give one clock pulse, then one instruction is brought into the instruction register and the decoding and control it looks at the meaning of the bits and generate these signals and get the work done with the help of register file and ALU. Again, give you another clock pulse, so the program counter automatically increments to the next address so that next instruction will be brought into the instruction register. And again, based on the contents of the instruction register, the control signals we generated to get the work done through register file and ELU. So like this, the whole CPU works in coordination with the help of what is called as control and decoding circuit. Now what we do, we'll build first ALU, 4-bit ALU, then we will build the register file. So then we will build PC, uh, the program memory, instruction register, and the control decoding circuit. We'll do step by step. Now, so we will start with the, uh, now ALU logic. So keep all these sheets with you. So it will be useful when you design. Am I audible, Mohan? Hello, sir, yeah. Any student? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So now we will design with the, uh, with the logic scene. So I'll do slowly in the beginning to start with, to make sure that you can able to follow me. So if by chance, if you're using other version of a logic scene, Options may be look little different, but you can do it. Hmm? So if you're not following, 
just note down on the paper what I'm doing, draw it on the paper, then you can always do it. So now I want to design a loop circuit now. So what I'll do is, so here is the, all the components, design components available. There's a the two options for that, simulate and design. So you can just see that always you be there in the design when you're designing it. Only once the circuit is completed, you have to simulate it. Now, <coughs> I want adder first. I want to build an ALU means I require an adder because I want to implement addition instruction. I'll go to the arithmetic, click on the arithmetic. I'll pick an adder. I'll take an adder. Either you can design your own adder using a one bit adder or you can use this block adder, which can be configured for any bit. You can zoom any part by holding the control key and using a scroll bar of the mouse. You can zoom like that. So you can bring the component wherever you require. Now, hmm? do sufficient zooming so that you can draw the lines properly. Now, once you select the component, so make the keep the, your mouse cursor on the component. Look at the left side. There's a properties and a state is there. Go to the properties. You have to configure the adder. Now adder I require is a four bit adder. Now go to the properties, make the data which is equal to four bit. So now, now this adder becomes a four bit adder. Look, keep your cursor on every pin. Now keep the cursor here. Just see that it is a one of the input to the adder. Keep the cursor there. This is another input for the adder. So keep the cursor here. This is one indicates uh, carry in for the adder. In our case, since we are building the adder, there is no previous adder block is there. So we'll make this block. This is equal to zero always. Now this is the carry out generated from the addition. So this is the output. Like identify each pin represent what meaning. Now <coughs> I want to test the adder whether it's working fine or not. So what I will do is I should know that I have to feed two inputs here. What is the size of each input? Four bit because it's a four bit adder. Now look at this. This is a pin for input and this is the pin for output. Any inputs we have to feed. So I have to use this pin. So I'll click on this add pin. I'll keep it here and then make the connection to here. The moment I make the connection, if there's a color changes, that mean that so the compatibility of the bus is not there because this is four bit expecting your this input is giving one bit. Now select this input, go to the properties, make this data which is equal to four bit. So now I made a four bit. Similarly, now I take another add pin. So to connect to the another bus, another input of the adder. So again, I have to change, go to the select the pin, configure the bits is equal to four bit. So now you can move this and adjust it. Okay. Now I am able to feed two inputs to the adder. Now to test the adder, I'll put on an output pin. So look at that. This is the output pin. So this is the add pin. Both it's an add pin, but the direction symbol is different. You can just look that one is a control five, pin is different, other is a Control six, this pin is different. Now I'll click on this add pin. I'll connect here to the output. Now again, I'll adjust the properties of the add pin. I'll make it as a four bit. Okay. Now adder, everything what is required is ready. We will test the adder is working fine or not. So before we test it, we'll make the scene is all permanently zero because we don't require the scene data. So how do we do that? Close this arithmetic, just look at the design. This is what is called wiring is available wiring. So we use this for a lot of components. Click on the wiring, take the constant. You can just see that constant is there. Take this constant, bring it near to the scene, change the orientation of the constant if you want. Make it not. Okay, so change the orientation, just connect here and it should be always zero. So select the again constant. 0x, 1 is there, you make it 0x, 0. So now, so now the whole adder logic is fine. We will test it now. So how to test it? So this is what is called editing mode. So the, the next, you can see the symbol for simulation mode. Now click on the simulation mode, the finger. You can just see that. So finger pointing. So use this one, the simulation mode. Once you are in the simulation mode, you can change the data. So now one, I'll change it. First number is 001, second four bit number zero. See the answer is changing. 
Now I'm again make it one one zero zero one. See that it is changing here. Hmm? So if you want to see out, you want to represent, you can always use an LED also. You can able to connect to the see out and verify it's working. Hmm? So now <clears throat> having done this one, having done this one, so adder four bit adder is ready. We have tested all the operations. Now we will make it other logical operations add to this adder to make it ALU ready. So now what I will do is, so now I will take from the gates and gate first I'll take it because we require and now the size of the gate I'll change it gate size medium to narrow I'll make it so keep it here. Now each time I place the new component make sure that the the size of the gate should be defined how many inputs and the size of the input. Now the how many inputs is two inputs because always two operands we are supplying in the instructions. Now what is the size of the each operand? It's a four bit because the CPU is a four bit. So now go there change the data bit size is equal to the four bit. Now similarly take on R gate. So if you want you can reduce the size to narrow. Now place it and change the size of the data bits to four bit to input. Now similarly XR gate. So I'll take an XR gate. So change medium to narrow. So now again two inputs, but the size of each input is four bits. I take the four. Now after doing this one, now we have to feed the data to all these blocks also. So now I'll take this is let's say A input. I want to call this as let's say A input. Now I'll drag this one and connect to the one input of all the gates. Now similarly after doing that take the B input. Now connect to all the gates. So now so we have fed the inputs to adder and or an XR gates. Now the four outputs are there. These all the outputs I cannot take it and short to the same point. Outputs will never be shorted. Output we cannot short directly because why? If one gate generates one, other output is zero, they will short. So inputs you can short it. Outputs you cannot short it. What is the logic required? Some logic required on this side, right side. What is the logic? ALU or your assembly language program can only perform one operation either addition and or RXR. It cannot perform all four at a time. So you have to take the result from any one of the four and pass it to the output. That's what the logic requires. So how many inputs are there? So four inputs to this logic is required or in other words four outputs are there. I have to select one output and give to the outside of the ALU. So what is the logic required? We know that we have studied in the unit two the concept called multiplexer. Multiplexer means multiple inputs and one output. So we've used a multiplexer now to select one of the four inputs to the multiplexer by connecting all the four outputs to the multiplexer inputs and select one based on the requirement. If the instructions add, I have to pass result of the adder to the output. So now I will remove, I'll remove the output block temporarily because I'll put a multiplexer and then I'll connect the output. So now go to the multiplexers, go to the design, see that there's option called on the left side multiplexer is available. Click on the multiplexer. So click on the multiplexer component, put the component. Now configure the multiplexer properly. What are the options? First of all, how many select clients should be there for the multiplexer? Since we have four inputs we require, make the select inputs is equal to two. Now four inputs comes. What is the size of the each input? It should be the data bits of four. That means that the every pin represents one bus that is four data. So now we have connected it. Now I'll bring the data from all of the outputs of these blocks into the multiplexer input, the first one. So I'll draw. Adder is connected to the input zero. And is connected to the input one 
now r is connected to the input to 0 1 2 now xr is connected to the input 3 now all the inputs are connected now so now i will connect one output pin so which earlier we connected configure the input into four bits multiplexer output is four bit connect the multiplexer output to here now it is done now only thing is we have to connect one more input to select what operation i have to perform so that means that all the operations are performed but only output of one will be selected and passed to the output for that we require to select the what operation through the multiplexer so i'll take one more input pin so change the orientation of that so configure the input pin to two bits because select lines are two and connect this to here so now it's ready now we will test this logic it works or not now let's say i've selected zero zero now one zero zero one plus one zero zero one is answer is zero zero one it's correct now i'll make it zero one so I'll, uh, you cannot change in the editing mode you have to go to the simulation mode just look at the symbol finger symbol click on that now change it to zero one so if you make it zero one now it's selecting what logic it's selecting and logic so and logic now and logic performs the operation so you can look at the answer one zero is zero 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 one one is one one now i got the output what is coming from the and gate it has come to here now similarly make it one and this is zero now it's an r look at that answer represents now r logic one zero zero and one now make it one one now see that one one is an xr in xr we know that when both inputs are one it becomes a zero both input are zero 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 one zero means one so we got the output so that means that based on the inputs what you are presenting to the select lines to the select lines so you will be getting the output so all operations are performed but we are selecting one of the output based on the required now i have to give a label for all the uh, inputs and outputs now i'll start giving a label go to the editing mode select the property of the first one so they see that there's a label is there hdl required label is there click on that give a name for example capitals e so i'll just say that so this is a input now take the second one again go to the label capital b and then press enter b selected now similarly now go to the uh, select input we will call as an operation go to the label say op and then enter so operation is selected now let's say this is an output for me so i can just say o or c so i will say label o now now i got the operation now the circuit of the alu is completed which we are going to fit inside the the cpu once you test all the logics label them i can store this as one module so what i will do is i will create one more module that is inside don't create another logic same file in the same file so i am just creating one name module in that i am copying all this one and putting it just look at the left side of the screen plus vhdl is there you can see in the logic sim the left side plus is there so add circuit is there so within the logic sim same circuit you are adding the circuit i click on the add circuit then give some name capitals let's say alu enter after it so now it has gone to the it has gone to the alu i am inside the alu now now i'll go to main again how do you go to main again double click not single click double click main it comes here now I select everything, all the component. I place a cursor on the screen, then say Control A, uh, and then Control C. So I'm just copying everything here. You can you, even if you want, you are confident you can delete this also because you would have selected already. So now double click ALU on the left side. So when you say double click ALU, you come to the ALU. Keep the cursor in the ALU inside the path, in the, inside the space of the design. Then say Control V. Now you got it here. So now I have placed the whole of the ALU circuit inside another module called ALU. It's another circuit name called ALU or done it. Now, if you double click on the main, double click on the main, keep the cursor here. Nothing is there here because I copied there. Now, if you want to drag, you can drag ALU as a module. Just single click and that and just that and 
move the cursor to the design area you get this one so that means that now i have created an alu module so which i can use now to design the cpu so make sure that each one of you should have this uh, module available in the main so you can just see the names so a b output and both should come like this <coughs> mohan oh, sir mohan recording off mari mate innond mari ana 